This is a doggy border collie puppy doggy. Woof woof. I'm Michaela. This is Stevie. Okay. But finally introducing to you Stevie. Stevie is a border collie. Hey Stevie. Can you sit? And you give paw, lay down. Good doggy. So border collies, if you do not know, are considered to be the most intelligent breed of dog. And some interesting facts about Stevie here, as you might have noticed on her vest, but she is deaf. So how and why is she deaf? Stevie, her coat pattern is considered to be a merle. Merle in dogs, it's often mistaken as the color of a dog, but it's actually the coat pattern of a dog. And is not, it's not a commonly occurring coat pattern of these dogs. It's something that we made happen by just like selective breeding. So if Merle on Merle is bred together, what often happens is these dogs are born either blind or deaf. So in her case, she was born deaf. She is a compulsive shadow chaser, which is something we've been working on her with. And um, I have this little training remote and I can get her to stop. Can you sit? Good dog, because we're trying to teach her to live in the real world. But because she's deaf, she needs a lot of mental stimulation. She didn't get a lot of that, I don't think, before she came here, which is how she developed that extreme shadow chasing because she is constantly relying on her eyes. So these guys were bred specifically for herding. So these are a herding breed, um, super high strung, high energy. They are meant to track with their eyes. So because she can't hear, that's the only thing that she has to rely on is tracking with her eyes. So it's a really hard habit for her to break, right? So Stevie arrived here about five months ago. She came from a family who had other border collies and she came from a really good family. This was just a family that took her on and you just didn't have the background on training um, deaf, deaf dogs. And she became to have a lot of behavioral issues in the home. She was excessively herding the household dogs herd herding, you know, like they do with the sheep. And she was resource guarding and she was just, you know, compulsive shadow chasing and light chasing. So this just tells me she didn't have enough mental stimulation, which can happen with working dogs that aren't being worked. And with her case, it's just, it's so extreme and so important for her because she can't hear. But she came from a really great family and they always check up on her, right? Yeah. He's a border collie puppy doggy. So when Stevie came here, she actually had a lot of good base training. They trained her, you know, sit and lay down and she was really well crate trained. So that was really helpful that um, they did as much as they did. It was just a lot of behavioral problems that she had when she came here. And let me tell you, this dog has made so much progress. When she first came here, I consulted with a lot of different vets and people who are more knowledgeable on training border collies. And I've, I even had a few people say, like, if she doesn't make progress, she might be a candidate for being euthanized because she might not be having a great quality of life because she would just so oh, her whole world was like a shadow realm like she would barely take her eyes off shadows or lights it's like us humans didn't even exist i would try to interact with her i would try to engage with her and she would just be focused on on shadows so then i got this training collar which has been a lifesaver. So I just want to tell you a little bit about this training collar and how we use it for her and um, how it helps. So training collars can have a really bad rap because they can be used very inappropriately, but they can also literally be a lifesaver. Let me get Stevie back in frame here. Can you lay down? Good dog. I still talk to her even though I know she can't hear. This training collar has different settings. It has vibration and it has shock on it. So 
I know shock sounds really scary, but this is, like I said, literally a lifesaver. So we have taught her because she can't hear us. We can't call for her. We want her to be able to be off leash on our property. Our property is completely fenced, but you know, if she's ever in a situation where there's like, I don't know, a lawnmower or like something dangerous that like, Hey, that could seriously hurt her. The shock would be telling her like, Hey, like you're going to get hurt. You better back away. We've been teaching her, you know, the shock would be used if she was trying to lunge at a car because that could risk her life. Or if she's trying to go out the driveway gate because you know, that could risk, put her life at risk. Or if she's being aggressive to animal because that can put that animal at risk or hurt her. So she caught on very, very fast to what the different vibrations mean. So we, we use the shock if it's a dangerous situation and like, hey, you need to back away, you need to stop what you're doing because you can get hurt. Or the vibration, um, we use vibration with two seconds in between as a come and we use a constant vibration as like a warning that she's doing something bad, but you know, not something that's necessarily like life life risking, but we don't want her to do it. And she has caught on very fast, so I can't wait to show you guys her progress. And hopefully this video was easy for you guys to watch as I'm shivering and shaking the whole time. Oh. All right, now I'm gonna find my cameraman to help me with the rest of this video. See you guys. All right, you see that? She's just She's really following them. She's doing her little foot tap thing. And I just want her to stop that. So I'm gonna press vibrate a couple times and hopefully she'll back away from the fence. There we go. And then I give her, good dog, good dog. If she does try to go out the driveway gate, I am going to use the shock on her just because that's a life or death matter. We want to make sure she's not going outside the driveway gate. This is really good. I'm not trying to make eye contact with her because I don't want her to think that I want her to come to me. Um, and this is very common with people maybe driving through the driveway or walking out the driveway. We do not want her to follow us. So she was really good with that. I'm going to give her a treat. Up, oh, up, oh, see the bug. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay, so Stevie is a chronic shadow chaser and shadow chasing in, for her anyways, is an obsessive compulsive behavior because it's really hard for her to stop. And it can get to the point where she's slamming her face into my shadow. Yep, and then she's, so I'm vib pressing vibrate now. I just want her to stop and there we go, she stopped. See if I can get her attention to just come to me now. Vibrate, one, two seconds. Vibrate, one, two seconds. Vibrate, one, two. Up. Oh, she's getting in shadow realm again. Still pressing vibrate, counting to two in between. I just want her to come to me.
when she plays with it. Do you think she'll ever play with it? I hope so. Really? Stevie, we get you enrichment and this is what you do? <laughs> it even has its own shadow. Come on, man. This is the first time I've gotten Stevie interested in playing with a toy outside. <laughs> so Stevie is chasing butterflies. Let's see if I can get her to come with the collar now that we've been using it for a couple weeks. Okay. And I'm gonna press it now. Yeah, good doggy! Good doggy! Good job! Good job! <laughs> that was really good. are the animals. She used to be the absolute worst with. She would just go bonkers at the cage trying to get them. So I have to grab some things out of the fisher cage. We'll see how she does, but she's focused on the butterflies, which is good. You let her do that all she wants. if she's not right up against the fence just completely eyeing them down that can really stress them out <laughs> 